Hi everyone, back in Extinguishing the Inferno of Anger. We are in chapter 10, which is handicaps. Piggybacking on the previous chapter about those who are disappointed, discouraged, disillusioned, and desperate, this chapter will cover those who are such people due to being handicapped in some way. People can become enraged through fear of handicaps, be it spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, or even financial. This is all too real for countless people who are handicapped. All of these, which there was a list, I gave a list. All of these and so much more can cause rage and absolute fury within a man or a woman. In situations where someone is born with a birth defect, such as missing limbs or internal organs, cancer, a cleft palate, or other deformities are certainly at the top of the list of people who can become angry at their misfortune. What I have witnessed through the years, oddly enough, is that those who were born this way seem much better balanced than those who become handicapped later in life, primarily in adulthood. Those handicapped people who are, who are so since birth have learned just how normal they are because they've had a lifetime to overcome their fears, anger, and anxiety about the matter. People who were in a car accident, for example, have a dreadful time dealing with a handicap if they lose an ability to which they had grown accustomed. Maybe they were an athlete who was suddenly ineligible for a scholarship or a ballerina who could no longer have a career as a dancer. Maybe they have to go through intense physical therapy or live in a wheelchair. These handicaps are often more crippling mentally, emotionally, and spiritually rather than physically. They can easily become inflamed about being handicapped, feeling as though God done them wrong. They pour all their rage and frustration out on God as though God isn't sovereign, God doesn't love them, completely forgot about them, or worse. They ponder that maybe God does not exist at all. That alone can cause strong feelings of anger and bitterness. Then there's the group who simply age out of abilities. I know my dad, a retired chief of police, has personally struggled with no longer being capable of mowing his own lawn or other simple tasks of a younger version of himself. While he was a virile, self-sufficient man who could do almost anything to which he set his mind, now, at 77, his body is riddled with arthritis and can barely move, much less mow the grass. That is a bad place to be, knowing you desire to do everyday chores, yet cannot. If he were a godless man, I could actually understand him cursing and allowing his anger to go into rage. Of course, he does not because he is a man of God, but watching the level of pain he's in 24-7, 365, I would certainly not be baffled if he lost his cool. Fortunately for us all, he grasped the concept that the body of flesh is of this world and will go back to dust from which, from which it came. He understands that, though God can and often does heal the physical body, because it is of the earth, it is susceptible to pain and suffering. Being in Christ does not exempt one from suffering, to my great dismay and to everybody else's, I'm sure. He harnesses his feelings and does not allow them to run rampant and out of control. There is the group of people who constantly fear rejection. And let me add this one side note, and I, I learned this many, many years ago, I think... I was trying to think of who it was that I heard to say this. It's not original to me, but it says that um, the very place that you fear is the place you will find yourself because fear leads to the thing that you don't want to be in front of. So whatever one fears is the exact position in which they will find themselves. People who fear rejection are more rejected than others based on the fact that they try so hard to cling to people, they actually push them away. Fear causes them to cling and people hate clinginess. I know I do anyway. When those fearful people lose people left and right, they get angry. They start feeling as though everyone has left them, everyone has done them wrong, and then they feel justified in their anger. Instead of looking inward so as to check themselves and make the necessary changes Holy Spirit prompts, they sit and sulk wondering why so many people could have possibly rejected someone as wonderful as they. And it goes on a little bit further. So the point is, you know, when we get handicaps, instead of looking at God saying, okay, God, since you've taken something away or something that I once clung to is now gone, what do I do in this? What is your purpose? What is your goal in this loss? Because when, when something is lost, God brings something else that is a better gain than what you lost. So, you know, I pray that instead of sitting around being angry at what you've lost, take a hard look at what God's doing. Say, God, show me. Instead of, God, what are you doing? Which is what we've all done at some point, whether we admit it or not. 
but get to that place where you're, you humble yourself before God and say, God, show me. Show me in this new stage of my life, in this new season, what it is you have for me to do. Show me how I can be a blessing to you, Father, and a blessing to your people in this situation. Father, we thank you that you are almighty. We thank you that you are sovereign. We thank you, Father God, that you don't leave us here abandoned as we've prayed so many times. Thank you. Thank you, almighty God, that we're not abandoned even when we feel like it. Father, for those who have lost an ability, who have lost money, who have lost spouses or children or whatever the case may be, Father, in their loss, Father, show them who you are. Show them the replacement, not that something could be replaced. But, Father, show them what that next season is, that in their loss, show them what they will gain through that loss. Father, I pray that you will just comfort them, console them, and, Father, pull them out of that desperation and that despair and that depression, which has caused them to sink further into that black abyss, Father God, that you don't want them. Bring them into the holy light of Christ Jesus. Show them exactly who you are, God, that you are, in fact, sovereign, that you have a purpose and a plan for everything. Father, if they need to repent and and fall on their faces before you let that happen for the person who has already repented who has already fallen on their faces before you father god lift them up and do season father god so that they can have the light of christ shine upon them father god and take them greatly into their next level of life father we just thank you we bless you almighty god for who you are amen blessings